2022 is a digital era. Everywhere we have a lots of fancy machines like CT scan, MRI, echocardiography, EEG and so on. I do not say anything is wrong but I should say that being a pediatrician for me the most favorite tool for me is still a non-stretchable measuring tape because it can cause wonders and in this video we are going to learn head circumference, microcephaly and craniostenosis because with simple measure tape we are going to know what is microcephaly. We don't require any kind of fancy machines for it. So do not skip anything, watch till end, let's start learning. Hi, I am Dr. Triya Virani Malde, pediatrician and consultant neonatologist. I will be your guide for pediatric subject. If you are new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video because lot is going to happen for pediatrics on this channel so first question arise how to take head circumference it was already discussed in a previous lecture if you are not gone through anthropometry please go through it link is in the description box as well as there is i button So first of all, it's one of the assessment of the physical growth. Tool is we all know it is non-stretchable measuring trap. And what we have to do, the head circumference has been taken between the occipital protuberance, maximum part of the occipital protuberance till the supraorbitary orbital ridges on the forehead. It is also called occipital frontal, occipital frontal circumference that is O. F C so and it is taken with the cross tap method which is demonstrated in this picture that the, the tap should have a crossing over it and then we have to measure the number which is there in the measuring tap how does the normal head circumference grow this is also a revision a very easy to remember here is we need to remember at birth at three month at 9 month, at 3 year, like this we need to remember, at birth, then at 3 month, then 9 month, then 3 year and 9 year. Okay, at birth it is 33 to 35. Then we have to keep on adding 5. Here it is 40, here it is 45, then it is 50 and here it is around 50. 3 to 55 so this is the easiest way remember this 35 and then you keep on adding 555 five, five to it and you are done here we have to remember birth 3939 three, okay that's all okay so very important thing what is microcephaly if you go by the definition whenever we have a child whose head circumference is less than third centile or it is less than min minus three standard deviation below the mean for age and the gender now how does we will come to know it is uh, less than a third centile for that we have a two availabilities one there are ready-made charts available we have to uh, plot the circumference suppose this is a one year child and if the head circumference is below 42 it means we are below the third centile this is one of the way another way which is available is we are having charts who is having a mean value then minus 1 sd then minus 2 sd and minus 3 sd according to the age and the gender and we have to see our value if value is below third centile then it means that it is the child is having a microcephaly similarly what is macrocephaly but here it is a twist it is not a three standard deviation it is plus two standard deviation it is 95th centile okay so you have to remember this for micro for micro this is correct definition minus 3 sd for the macrocephaly it is plus 2 sd and 95th centile pay pay attention over here this is very important question for you so uh, let's discuss now causes of microcephaly for the ease of understanding we have divided the causes into the 
primary and secondary causes if you see the primary causes first and foremost come come the list of syndrome and all undergraduate students are really scared of it but there is a very simple mnemonic to remember it rubin and smith family crying for eating corn at pataya beach rubin stand for rubin sartaibi syndrome smith stand for smith lemeliopit syndrome family stands for familial crying stand for cryduchet syndrome eating stands for edward syndrome corn stand for cornea delen syndrome and pataya stands for patau syndrome here edward is trisomy 18 and patau is trisomy 13 so these are all syndrome which are associated with microcephaly if you see the secondary causes of uh, microcephaly they are also very easy to remember you have to just remember c m and a c stand for congenital intrauterine infection that is torch infection Zika virus infection a very important cause which happened in Brazil there were many kids are born with the microcephaly which is mosquito acquired disease parasite acquired disease then maternal causes in maternal causes the maternal exposure to alcohol drugs and chemicals and radiation drugs in a form of a phenytoin a thalidomide those are all can be associated with congenital malformation and could be a part of microcephaly and the acquired causes we all sh- should know about acquired causes these are acquired causes of microcephaly and these are red syndrome sickle syndrome and angelman syndrome more causes in which the child could have a microcephaly because of a perinatal insult like severe birth asphyxia central nervous system infection in a form of bacterial or uh, viral meningitis it could be a part of malnutrition and there could be a brain injury trauma which could result in microcephaly now if you see the skull is having bones as well as sutures and we need to know few things about sutures and their fusions because the one of one of the very important cause for microcephaly is a craniosynostosis so we'll go into the detail of this if you remember the first year of your anatomy the the skull is a formation of various bones here you see first part is a frontal bone right after that parietal bone in the last it is occipital bone so frontal bone two frontal bo- bones are connected by metopic sutures frontal bone is connected to parietal bone with the help of coronal sutures and parietal bones are connected with each other by sagittal sutures okay and sagittal sutures of uh, the parietal bones is connected by the occipital by the lambdoid suture and there are two important openings in the skull which is called fontanelles one is anterior fontanelles and another is a posterior fontanelle fusion of these bones are very important because as a part of development those these cranial bo- bones are open for many years for allow bra- brain to have a good growth but if they are joint they have a premature fusion of the sutures then it may end up with the craniosynostosis as well as problems with the brain develop this has already been discussed that bone- bones of the skull is held by the sutures the spaces between the bones are called fontanelle now this is very important please pay attention over here the posterior fontanelle which is at the back of the skull is closed by 6 week anterior fontanelle by 9 months to 18 months and all cranial bones are getting closed by 22 to 39 months this has to be remembered by you it is very easy 6 18 and 39 has to be remembered by you so this has already been discussed that the this bones and the sutures allows brain to grow well but if they are closed prematurely then we are ending up with one important condition that is craniosynostosis so how again we are going to remember okay if we have a unicoronal suture fusion like you can see here this coronal suture is prematurely fused then we have a plagiocephaly 
BB. We have to remember if bicoronal suture is fused like this, we'll end up with the brachycephaly. If metopic sutures are fused, we end up with the trigonocephaly. So B for a bicoronal, end up with the brachycephaly. T for a metopic suture, end up with the trigonocephaly. Now you have to remember S. If the sagittal sutures are fused prematurely, we will end up with scaphiocephaly or it's a dolicocephaly. It's a synonyms for the scaphiocephaly. A very important syndrome, a very important condition in the skull in which we have a clover leaf appearance. It's a like a clover. It will be have a clover leaf appearance in which you will have coronal, lambdoid and sagittal. So it is a mnemonic CLS. Here also CLS. Coronal, lambdoid and sagittal suture fusion. It could be a part of Cruzen, Pfeiffer or a Carpenter syndrome. <laughs> Very important thing, turricephaly, a tower shaped head. Tower shape, cone shape, funny. So this is the way you can remember. T stands for turricephaly. Cone shape. Cone shape means coronal suture fusion. S for the sphenofrontal suture fusion. And F stands for frontoethmoidal suture fusion. So this is the way we can remember the which bones are involved in a turricephaly. Again, it's a trivia time. Let us have a few MCQ sessions along with it. First question is microcephaly is defined as of your options are A. 2 standard deviation less than mean B. 3 standard de de uh, deviation less than mean less than 33 cm at birth or it is less than 40 cm at birth. So correct answer is 3 SD less than mean while if you see the microcephaly it is plus 2 SD 90, above 95th centile. Question number 2 is anterior fontanelle is located between which two bones? It is very easy. We all know the answer. It is between frontal and parietal bone. This is frontal bone. This is parietal. This is occipital. AF is located here. PF is located between these two bones. This is metopic suture. This is coronal suture. This is sagittal suture. And here we have a lambroid suture. So question number three is suture of the skull is fused by A, five year, B, one year, C, three year, or it is D, eight years. So correct answer is C, three years. We have to remember six weeks, 18 months, and then 22 to 39 months. So three year is the closest. Around three year will be the correct answer. Four is Sagittal sutures overlapping causes oxycephaly, scaphiocephaly, plagiocephaly or it is a cephalocephaly. Very easy. Sagittal suture is S. Right. Sagittal suture means scaphiocephaly. Sagittal suture overlapping cause. Again the same question but we need to know the synonyms for scaphiocephaly and we all know it is dolicocephaly. Premature fusion of coronals, phenofrontal and frontoethmoidal suture is seen in we have to remember this mnemonic tower shape corn shape funny so coronal sphenofrontal and frontoethmoidal that is called yes you all are correct it is turricephaly turri means tower shape head false about head circumference it is measured at supraorbital reach. It ma uh, measures hydrocephalus and microcephaly. Serial measurement is very much useful. Helps in measurement of neurological development or it is an indicator of brain growth. We need to find incorrect statement. So we'll discuss the correct answer is helps in measurement of I mean the false is this one. This is wrong. So this is our answer. Rest all things are normal. Yes. It is at the supraorbital reach. Yes, it is measuring hydrocephalus as well as microcephaly. If we have a provision of the charts, serial measurement is very useful and is an indicator of brain growth. So uh, this concludes our uh, very short stretch, uh, short session of uh, microcephaly, causes of microcephaly as well as craniosynostosis. Questions are included from this part. It is very complex, but if you go through the 
uh, video two to three times it will be a very easy for you so suggestions are always welcome for the improvement please let me know what else you would like to learn from me till that time take care of yourself bye if you are still new to my channel please do subscribe and give like to this video